Um, so basically we go over Hooke's law f equal to minus kx. So let's say if this is the uh, simulation uh, page, we have a ruler here and we can uh, choose, a, we can click natural lens. This is the natural lens of the, natural lens of the uh, spring equilibrium position. So because the spring didn't, um, didn't do any extension or compression, so it does not show any equilibrium position. And the movable line, so when the, uh, let's say movable line. Okay, so we, we just need the uh, natural line right now. Gravity. Okay, so this is the time here and we want to and you can choose the normal mode or slow mode um, when you use slow mode is when uh, uh, slow mode is when you want to read uh, let's say you want to read the uh, distance the um, you can use slow mode because it the uh, the screen moves slower so let's say we uh, attach a weight here so this is move, move the ruler to uh, to align with the uh, natural line. So this is equilibrium position. So what does this mean? This, that means that when it's green, um, before before we add in the weight on the screen, the screen has a natural lens of this, but after we add to uh, add a weight to the spring. So this is the equilibrium position. That means um, at this point, the uh, weight, okay. So at this point, the weight pulling down of the spring and the uh, spring force pulling up are equal. So, th so this one means, um, so this, this is called equilibrium. But because at this point the speed is maximum, uh, so the so the um, so they uh, so they want the spring or the weight you can say it still have a tendency to go down to uh, to still go down, and then uh, as when it goes down when this when the position they cross this position the uh, force spring the spring the force of the spring will have a bigger force than the weight of this uh, weight. So that means the they have a um, negative acceleration. So that means when the uh, reach, when they reach the maximum speed, they go as further they go down, then the speed will decrease, decrease until it to be zero. And the, because the um, FSP is bigger than FMG, uh, right? And then um, when they reach to the zero point, oh, a zero uh, speed, then because the spring force is so big, uh, is bigger than the weight of the mass. So they will have a, like the um, acceleration to increase the speed from zero to maximum again. So basically uh, here the, the speed is zero, the bottom is also speed with zero, but the speed at the equilibrium position has the maximum speed. So this is how its, it's movement uh, works. And um, so you can see here two springs and uh, we can adjust the spring constant by adjusting here. But the point is here, the point here is uh, we don't have the numbers. We only have this um, scale, but we don't have numbers. So that's why Later, they will ask you to calculate the screen. Um, okay, let's see what they, um, what are we gonna do next? So the first, uh, the minus sign is, is the restorative force, always moving toward, uh, towards its equilibrium or rest position. Uh, K is a spring constant. Uh, it's called force spring constant. It has a unit here and X is a tension. So when we do measure X, we measure the um, distance of this part because this is when the, um, so the, this is the lens that um, 
uh, beyond its beyond its normal length. So we do the measurement of this. Um, we call weight force F equal to mg. So uh, uh, apparently here F equal to mg, m equal to 0.25 kilogram, and g 9.8. Uh, m is the mass of the object, uh, object, and g is 9.8. So we do, uh, so basically in this whole process, we play two forces. One is the spring force, one is um, the weight force, which is F equal to mg. So these two, uh, if they're equal, which is at the equivalent position, then the, uh, there's the, the, the total force is zero. Uh, so when it's at the initial point or the very bottom part, the top part, top position or bottom position, they have only have one force work on that. So let's say at the top part, the weight has still has a weight and but but the spring force is zero because it at its uh, initial point naturally. At the bottom, um, they at the bottom I still have two force because the weight of weight force always work on the spring. But at the bottom because the spring force reached to its maximum, so it pulling the uh, the mass up. Um, okay, uh, so they also want to do the angular speed omega. Omega can be uh, calculated by uh, theta over t. Okay, uh, I don't say we're gonna use this here. Uh, And periodic time for complete oscillation, uh, t e equal to one over frequency. Um, so they just do a derivative, and omega equal to two, e equal to theta over t. Theta, let's say, if we do okay. So why they want to tell you the why they want to bring the uh, angular speed because simple harmonic oscillation has two different ways. One is we do like a spring like this. Like it's also, it's a simple harmonic oscillation. Like they, they move like the spring like this. But another one is they do, um, they do like a, a simple harmonic oscillation. It's in a circle. So they do uh, in a circle. I guess we can do. Okay, but, uh, so another one is like an inner circle. Um, but they, they adopt the same rules to do the calculation. So that's why they bring this. Uh, so they, are, uh, they do the derivatives here. So since omega equal to theta over t, uh, let me write down so we can do it together. Omega equal to uh, theta over t, right? This is the equation. And equal to theta, let's say if we draw a circle. Let's see. This is, this is theta. <coughs> and omega equal to say over t. This is angular speed. This is the angular speed. So say the over t, but let's say if it goes over for the uh, whole circle, it's two pi, right? And over t, this is the t. If it goes for a circle, that t is the periodic time. So that's why we, we have the angular speed omega equal to two pi over t. And since um, so the frequency um, t equal to one over frequency, so one over t is a frequency. So it equals to two pi times. 
times f. So this is how they do the math here. And the acceleration is a equal to minus omega square x. Um, also, the minus sign is because it's a restorative acceleration. Uh, let's see if someone can show the points here. Uh, so force, um, force equal to, they want to use, okay, they do another uh, mass variety is here. So F, so F equal to MA. Okay, first MG, and it gives the, and also we have a, a spring force F equal to FSP, FSP equal to minus Kx. And it also equals to, um, because the A, um, so if we only have a spring force, that means uh, FA, right? So F, F equal to MA and equal to M times uh, minus omega square times X. So we have this equation. And then what you're gonna do is So this lead to, so if you cancel out, cancel out uh, this X, so this omega, omega equal to K over M, uh, take a square root, or we can do K equal to M omega square. So we have to remember this equation because we're gonna use this one to do the um, spring constant, to calculate spring constant. And, um, so, uh, okay, so for simple harmonic motion, position of oscillator is given by S equal to S omega omega T. Um, so velocity, um, so velocity V equal to V prime, so basically we do the derivative of time, and then we do the derivative of time of this is equal to, so cosine chain to sine, and we have an add to negative sine here because of the derivative of that. And the acceleration is uh, to do double derivative, which is we do uh, the derivative of cosine and change back to cosine, uh, sin, sine, sine uh, to cosine. And the potential energy of spring is um, half k x squared, the x zero extension. Uh, so the potential energy of spring is same as the work W done by the spring. And the kinetic energy, uh, kinetic energy is half mv squared. So we remember that. And I'm gonna clean the screen a little bit. So the first one, uh, the intro, that, uh, intro um, so for this one, we needed to calculate this uh, with this mass. So, okay, for your spring for this experiment, spring one for this experiment, spring one, select three has spring constant. So one, two, three, the spring constant. And the default gravity on Earth. So you see different gravity also affect this, the spring. Um, because this affects the liturgy as we, as we already learned from measure the liturgy. Okay, so the uh, checkbox is at top corner, natural lens and equilibrium position. So we have checked these two, bo two boxes. So we have these lines on the screen. And the select 250 max and type to screen one, press right stop button at the side of the screen want to stop oscillation. So what do we do is like just what do we do? And um, measure and record the value for extension of screen one with 250 mass attached. So measure the extension. So basically it's this centimeter. So the extension is 41 centimeter. And um, 
You stop watch for 10 oscillations. Pull mass down a word away for its equilibrium position for an extension between 10 to 20 centimeter and release to begin oscillation. You stop watch for 10 oscillation, do two times tr two trials and get the average of these two rounds and determine the periodic time. So, okay. So we're gonna pull a lot, um, maybe 10 to 50, 10 to 20 centimeter. We can pull down to maybe like a, between 50 and 60. So, okay, we start oscillation. Um, so we're gonna measure when the mass goes up to the bottom, up to the top. So we start measure. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this is ten. So that because this is for ten oscillations, right? So we divide this twenty. Uh, uh oh, sorry, twelve seconds. Twelve point eight four seconds are the ten oscillations. Ten um periodic time. So we did divide it by 10. This is the periodic time. You do two trials and let's say take the average of periodic time. So you record here. And then you determine the spring constant used two different method. So one is F uh, minus, um, oh, sorry, F divided by X. So remember here X is not is not measured from here to here. It's measured from, uh, let's see, stop. It's measured, see, we, this is 41. We measured from here to here. Okay, I sum up today. So this is a movable line. So we measure this distance. If I move, let's see, if I pull is higher. So why the movable lines doesn't change? Honestly, I don't really know what is a movable line here. What does this mean? Okay, stop. So when you do the measurement, you have to, because since we pull, pull this one, so F equal to um, Kx and we do, F equal to minus Ks, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna get a um, spring constant. Um, so, so this is this one is the um, let's say this one is the initial point. Then we pull here, pull to sixty one. So we can measure just twenty. So X equal to twenty centimeter. You can calculate the K, and then you can use another way. Um, remember here, uh, K equal to M omega square. So we can use this one to, uh, so omega is two pi over T. So we take omega, omega equal two pi over T into this equation. So we get the equation of this one, k equal to, uh, equals to for m pi square over t square. So there are two ways to calculate spring constant. So in that way you can compare if you get an accurate spring constant or not. And if we, you have any difference, you can um, calculate the difference. Um, so why, why we have a difference? Because just um, as I mentioned in the first lab, there's always errors, so you cannot avoid error. Um, so that's maybe because your measurement error, when you read it, your measurement, it has an error, or it's because um, when you do the periodic time, you, you calculate the periodic time, it has a small error, but it's fine. Uh, error is okay. Um, you can never avoid error. Uh, determine the percent percentage. Basically, uh, how do you do, uh, determine the percent difference? 
So x1 minus x2, oh sorry, k1 minus k2 divided by k1 and times 100%. This is how we do the um, uh, percent of difference. Determine mass of unknown code tab masses. So once you, divide, you, you calculate k, right? So you, you can choose one k or you can take the average, it doesn't matter. And then, um, then let's say we use this one, um, f equal to, um, so let's say we, we calculate this k equal to maybe uh, five. I just made up a number. So if k equal to five, I'll calculate it from here, right? And stop here. And move back and we attach to this. And um, so you can, uh, since you already know k, what is k is. And here what we do is, um, you can still f equal to mg. So at this one and at the equilibrium position equal to uh, kx, right? And then we can measure x, we can measure from here to here. This is uh, 33, 33 centimeters. Uh, but the m is unknown and we know k is five. We calculated from previous, right? So we know this one. And when the, we divide it by 9.8, we will have the mass for this one. So you, 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 you can calculate the annual mass of this uh, three it's for the first part. So you don't have to write any, um, so first one, for, you just need to show your calculations, that'll be fine. And vectors, okay. The second one is vectors. We're gonna play with this. Uh, so play vectors, we're gonna, so the displacement, check this box, and natural lens, and mass equilibrium, and mobilize, mobilize, at so the, equi the equilibrium, pretty much like the previous slide, we have this uh, natural, natural line, and this is the equilibrium. And we can answer, when we attach to this mat, we attach to the mass here, answer the questions here. Uh, so at which point is the velocity minimum or zero? So you basically try to observe um, here you can also click here on uh, velocity and acceleration. You can check the velocity, answer the questions about the velocity and acceleration, weights maximum, weights minimum. Um, so basically the uh, velocity has a minimum at the top and the bottom and the maximum at the equilibrium position. And the acceleration uh, is on the opposite. Acceleration is at minimum, which is zero, at uh, the equilib equilibrium position, but at the maximum at the top and the bottom. Um, so is gravity ever zero? Gravity ever zero? Gravity never be zero. Because it's gravity. Uh, here, the uh, total force is zero because the it not be it's, it's not because gravity is zero. It's because the spring um, spring force cancel out the uh, uh, weight force of the mass. So that's why. Is spring force ever zero? Yes, spring force ever zero because when it's at at uh, when the spring is at its natural length, it has zero extension, so it has zero uh, spring force. 
what happens when the spring constant is increased. So when the spring constant is increased, that means K is increased. That means F will be increased, F, SP will be increased. Um, what happens when gravity is changed to the moon, Jupiter, or planet X? So you can play here, the moon. Um, so for, um, so the Earth, the gravity is 9.8, but we know the on the moon, the gravity is smaller. So that means the gravity uh, is smaller. A Jupiter, if the Jupiter has bigger, um, bigger gravity, that means the gravity will, um, will increase. And also you can determine X. I see, um, but how you determine that? Basically we can put it, I mean, you don't have to, but you can make a ruler here. This is on the earth. So you see uh, the equilibrium position is um, 50, 50 something. If you change to moon, see, you see X is smaller. So, okay, let me write down something. So equilibrium position equal to mg equal to kx, right? So if x is smaller, that means the k is constant. k is the physical property, so it never changes. It's just like, no matter if you're in the moon, you're on the uh, Jupiter, or you're on the Earth, it doesn't change at all. So if x is smaller, that means f is smaller. f is smaller, the mass is also constant. Doesn't change, that means g is smaller. So that's why you can use K to determine G, right? So this is that we, we know when it moved to moon, it becomes smaller. The little g, which is gravity, becomes smaller. Let's see uh, when we. Oh, sorry. Let's see. I have this on. Let's see. We move. We change to uh, Jupiter. Hmm? Why can I change? Change to Jupiter. Wow, it's so big. It's so big. That means the gravity is bigger. Let's say we change to planet X. Okay still bigger than the Earth, right? Earth is 50 something, now it's 70 something. Still, the gravity of planet X is bigger than, uh, bigger, is greater than Earth, on Earth. Determine the value of gravity on planet X. So you can determine, because X you can measure, K you already calculated. Uh, and then you can M, uh, so it's, Point two five kilogram, and you can measure. You can calculate g. It's for lab two. Okay. So okay, lab three. Any questions so far? So for this lab, we don't need a procedure, right? No, you don't have to. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Did we need a procedure for lab five two? Sorry? Do we need a procedure for lab five, um, for lab, lab two today? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. here, it really depends on how much work we're gonna do because here, there's some more questions. You have to do more math. So I wanna save your uh, time on procedures to write, to do more math problems. Um, so, uh, okay, so the lab, this one, we're gonna do a lot of energy calculations. So we go to the lab. So this is the energy table. Uh, we can play, uh, we can put it here. And um, here, I just wanna remind you guys to move the damping. Uh, so if we have damping, that means we have in, you see, the thermal, that means we, convert all some part of the energy to thermal, to heat. This one you cannot calculate at all. So we wanna um, move to zero, no damping. That means basically, you know, when we do anything, uh, always have energy loss. Energy loss 
but we also learn the energy are constant. So never the energy never uh, be created, never be uh, disappeared. Um, it just uh, convert to convert from one format to another format. So that's why because the uh, energy thermal energy is hard to calculate. We wanna um, keep the um, energy constant in a calculable calculable way. So that's why we want to remove the damping. That means we are in the ideal environment. There's no heat convert conversion. So, uh, so we don't have to worry about the uh, thermal energy. So if I remove the damping, so if you see here, there's no thermal at all, right? So that means we are in the ideal environment. But in the real life, always have like anything you do, it always can convert to thermal energy. So it's hard to calculate. So we don't use that. Now, um, okay, so we're gonna do stop. Uh, see, you have you can click on velocity and acceleration, uh, natural length and equilibrium. And gravity is on Earth. Okay, let's see what we ask us. So check the boxes at top right corner for natural length and mass equilibrium. A ruler or stopwatch and a stopwatch. Okay, so I notice here is a hat is zero. So that means remember when we do, when we learn potential energy, potential energy is you have, you have to choose a reference. So reference is here. So basically this is zero. I just don't get confused when you do the potential energy and then you do the um, um, elastic energy because elastic energy measures for the spring. Um, the potential energy measures uh, uh, the height of the spring. Let's see, okay. Move here and I wanna stop here. So if, let's say, if I, I wanna calculate the potential energy, uh, potential energy, I think we call it gravity. Gravity energy, gravity energy. So that means um, you have to calculate from here is zero. So basically, if you calculate from this is one meter, right? Calculate from here to here. So the height is not twenty three. Oh no, twenty eight. The height is not twenty eight because this part is twenty eight. This part, the height we try to calculate the height use one meter minus this part is this is the height, right? This is, don't get confused when you do the, when measure the X, spring uh, extension X and the height. Oh my God, I feel like I speak too fast. Now I need some oxygen for my brain. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, just don't get confused. Um, Okay. Uh, oh my God, I, I really need some oxygen. Select a hundred uh, gram mass attached to the screen. Adjust mass measure to value greater than uh, 250. And okay, so we put the ice, uh, sorry. We'll put a hundred, uh, the mass of a hundred and you can adjust to you see the mass, we can adjust the mass to greater than 250, 250. Because it's greater than 50, 50, then we can do a 300 gram. I just need to drink some water. Um, press the right stop button at the side of the screen to stop oscillation. Okay, let's stop oscillation. Uh, stop watching to time for 10 oscillation, do two times. Uh, okay, like we, what we did before, uh, we uh, hold late. why the mobile line is here I don't really understand um 
So what are we gonna do is stop. And um, so this one is it's 50, right? We pull it to 70. This one assume it's 50, we pull it 70 and start. And then we still do the same. We uh, here, uh, we time the priority time for 10 oscillations and divided by 10, we have priority time. And we can calculate spring constant. Remember how to calculate spring constant? We have two equations here. You do either way, either because we have priority time here, you can do this one, or you can do um, F spring minus X. Uh, so F S P uh, let me see if I can use this one. F S P. Yeah, we can still use this one because F S P equal to M G. M G uh, and we know M is 300 gram. G is on Earth is 9.8. So you can use either one. Uh, so I prefer use this one because it's simple. Um, but it's totally up to you. And after we calculate the spring constant, we determine the energy of spring, uh, energy of spring at the top of the oscillation. So determine the spring. So um, that means we determine the elastic energy at the top of spring. Remember how to calculate the elastic energy? Where's elastic energy here? The potential energy of a spring is uh, one half k x squared, right? So since they're asking you, uh, what's the energy at what's the energy of spring at the top? At the top, um, at the top, that means the spring at this top. That means there's no um, extension. So. Sorry, I just sometimes I just keep quiet because I don't really want spend too much energy. Um, F okay E equal to yes P equal to one over K X squared. So at the top X equal to zero. So the elastic energy here is zero. Um, determine the spring energy at the equilibrium position. Uh, so at the equilibrium, per, equilib, equilibrium position, you can calculate the axis here, right? So you can uh, measure the equi equilibrium position x equal to, let's say is 65. So you, okay, x equal to 65 centimeter. And you have to convert centimeter to meters. And then uh, at the lowest point, because we know the, um, it just the, um, how to say, the equilibrium position is in the middle. Even in the graph, probably it doesn't show, it doesn't seem like in the middle, but in the math, we do, uh, assu uh, do assume the, we do uh, assume the bottom part uh, the bottom part of the um, spring is uh, double, is two times of this, of the first one, which is x equal to 65 to So it's this equation to calculate spring, the energy of spring at these three points. And they ask you determine the total energy of the system so the total energy is, uh, there are two parts. I mean, it depends if the, when, they're, when the, uh, the mass stop moving, there is only two parts, but when the mass stop start moving and um, it has another one, a light uh, kinetic energy. What I would do is I choose to, um, simplify the calculation process. I, I don't want to calculate because the speed is also very complicated to um, calculate. 
So I'm going to choose um, a point where the kinetic energy is zero. So when kinetic energy is zero, remember k equal to half mv squared. So that means the v had to be zero. So we have to consider when the v is zero. v is zero when, uh, when it's reached to the top or bottom, right? So we're going to, what I would do is I choose the top because at top, the elastic energy is zero. So the only thing about the uh, total energy is the potential energy. So what you do here for potential energy, just measure the heights here. And then you can calculate, calculate potential energy. Um, a potential energy, therefore the total energy. Um, show the work done on spring is equal to change in spring potential. So basically they want you to find two positions and you calculate Uh, mg, mg delta h equal to uh, x, uh, x1 minus x1. Um, so this is the equation here. So what I would do is I choose two points. One is at the bottom, one is at the bottom. Oh, but sorry. One is at the top, one is bottom. So you, one is uh, the kinetic energy, one is zero, one is maximum. Maximum is when you do have six, five times two, right? And the height, you can also calculate the height here. And see if this um, uh, delta H, which is delta H, um, delta H, so delta H with them, okay. So because here the maximum is like 90, 90, 90, 96 or 97, right? And, um, so when we do delta H, remember, so the hat is not, a, so, um, okay, let's choose, uh, this is X1, this is X, X2. So, so you use X2 minus X1, which is six, 65 times two minus zero. I mean, okay, I write down. X2 equal to 65 times 2 centimeter. X1 equal to 0. X2. Oh, I should say position 2. So when we do the hat, so H1, we have to find the relative H2, and there's H1, right? H2, so H1, you can just measure from here to here. Okay, I'm going to draw H1 from here to here. And H2 is from here. Okay, so you do the calculation because here H1 equal to, you can read maybe 90, 97. Oh, and H2 will be uh, 65. M2 minus 97. So let's see how it works. So you can measure if you can, you can try to see if these two are um, equal to each other. I mean, okay, so this is one calculation. This is another one calculation. And they want you to compare the, if this, these two are equal or not.
um, plot the following graphs, spring constant k versus distance. And um, here are the time versus mass. So when you do the, uh, the plot, you can always find the equations here, either here, you see here, or here. X versus uh, K versus X. That means the, the total of it. You can see, okay, another uh, problem I noticed when I read your lab report is, um, so sometimes the, uh, the, your data didn't show it's a linear, but you try to fit it into a linear graph. Um, that's not a, Recommend, recommend it because uh, you just plot, and like I said, uh, how you uh, you can plot in Excel and do scatter with a smooth line, then they will plot for you. Um, so it can help you to understand what kind of relationship it really has instead of uh, we assume it's linear. Sometimes I say it's linear because uh, I didn't do the uh, I didn't do the measurement, so I don't know. I just uh, give you an example. If it's linear, then what kind of result? It, what kind of um, so how are you gonna answer the questions? But in the real life, because you are the guy, uh, you work for the front line. You do the experiment. You are the experimentalist, so you do the la you do the experiment, and you know better than anyone else. I mean, even let's say if you do, you become a scientist. Um, you know better, let's say you become a graduate student, like a PhD student, you know better than your professor. That is for sure because you are the one, uh, you do the experiment, you just report your results. So basically you get your conclusion, you report to your professor. So the professor knows about this, your project because of you. So that means, um, so what I want to say is you have the first hand information compared to your professor because your professor don't do the experiment. So they only know from you. Um, so they get a secondhand uh, information, let alone other professors. And maybe they read the papers of you wrote. Uh, that means that, I mean, we, we know everybody try to make it like clear, make it, let, that's why we want you write the lab report. Because we want you can uh, convey, to your, convey your ideas more clear to other people. Uh, so that's why we, in the future, if you become a graduate student, you write uh, for either a grant proposal or you write for your papers, you publish your, publish your paper in the journals, um, you let other people know your work. And, but are those people, they know your work is already the second or third hand information. Uh, they are not the one who do the experiment. You are the one. So you, you, you are the one do the experiment. Your work is very important. And um, okay, so what I'm talking about? I feel like my brain is like um had a short cut or something. <laughs> Okay, so um, okay, so we go back to here. Oh yeah, I want to say, I want to say when you when you do the experiment, you get it. You uh, just present your work, uh, whatever. Um, it's uh, maybe you expect it to be a linear, but it doesn't show like a, a linear. But it doesn't matter. It's just your uh, result, your conclusion. Um, so just don't try to fit into a linear or. Uh, what kind of uh, graph you think it would be because um, your result will tell you um, what it really is. Okay, that's what I want to say. It just goes too far. Um, okay, let's see. So you plot these two graphs. Basically, you have a table here. So the fourth, wait, this is one. Oh, because when you plot this one, when you do this one, okay, I'll clean the screen for you. I think this lab is a little bit long. So we're already sophisticated. <laughs> Hope you guys feel good now. So 
So you can adjust to why is there something can join D1? So you see, you can adjust this one to measure scale. Okay, you can just, okay, you can just, right? So 0.1 kilogram, that means 100 gram. You know, adjust to 100, okay. Then you adjust, uh, adjust the mass and uh, uh, to follow this. And in the end, you calculate the annual mass. Like I said, we calculate the annual mass in the, uh, in the first time, right? Remember here? So, okay. Oh my God. Uh, I sweat so much, I feel I'm gonna pass out. Um, okay, let's finish it fast. It's already one hour and 35 minutes. And you measure the force. So the, the, the force is F equal to mg, you can calculate. And displacement you measure from this red line and to the gray line. And the spring constant, you calculate that because we have uh, F equal to mg equal to kx. You see, F equal divided by the uh, displacement. And time, periodic time, and the T. And you pull out this uh, table and, uh, okay, after you finish the ta this table, you can pull out these two graphs. And then um, you calculate these two unknown mass because you're gonna calculate the spring constant. So I think I would guess this all the spring constant are similar. Are similar to each other. Either you can choose one of them to calculate or you can take an average to calculate the unknown mass. Okay, so that's all for the lab. Uh, if you have any questions, you can you can ask me or you, okay. I advise you to watch recordings or previous uh, lab recordings. And I take attendance now. Um, wait. Playing the screen. Honestly, I, I feel like if I don't stop now, I, I'll pass out. <laughs> Uh, okay, the last one. Okay. See Ed? See Ed? Is the Ed here? No. Uh, Angel. Angel's here. Oh, here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hello? I put on the uh, lab seven. Thanks. AL. Uh, Marit. All right. Oh my God, I, you see, I, I don't even know, I don't even know where I put the case because my eyes are already, <laughs> I feel like I'm an older person. Okay, let's stop recording.